Trading Services, the Marley and Who1.co.uk present the 20 Megabyte Doctor Who Podcast. Hello and welcome to the 20 Megabyte Doctor Who Podcast. I'm Adam and oh, it's episode off. Can I do that? Can I redo that again? <clears throat> yes. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, I'm so tired. Hello and welcome to the 20 Megabyte Doctor Who podcast, episode 553. I'm Adam, and I had a couple of really good quotes, but uh, because I'm tired, I forgot them. But fortunately, Mary Lang has one. Pentophobia. It's not a fear of pants. It's a fear of everything, inc- uh, including pants, probably. And uh, Kirby Barton Sloan has one. Oh dear. That's all right. You won't have to listen to him for long. Oh god. We're dead again. <laughs> You've really upset me, Triple. <laughs> that one always gives me a, a chuckle. Yeah. <laughs> right, so hopefully Debbie's rebooting her machine and we'll be able to introduce no, her. No, she said later. that she has. Oh. The last thing she said was trying to join you again, no sound. No sound? <laughs> no sound. Well, I don't think she's on the call. No, I've just got you three. Oh, us three. Maybe she joined this. an old old call because I noticed that there was an open call from a, a year ago that one could join. Right, okay. So this week we're going to be doing night terrors, but stuff has been coming through on the live feed because we're about 10 minutes late due to technical issues. Oh, I bet I know who's been... Who's... Asking about um, it. Yes, yeah, so De- Debbie Melrose says I am, and then says lovely new glasses, uh, and then the call isn't even here as I have n- an option to join. And oh god, hang on. <clears throat> and then we have close it. Very well, role played computer. <laughs> Tim Drew says oh, I've, I've got to see the window. Yawning, Adam. Don't have nightmares. <laughs> Uh, what do you want? Uh, Debbie Melrose says, I'm under Deborah. Oh, yeah, how can you be under yourself? Or are you t- under my lovely Deborah that's in the other room? Uh, Terry Marr <laughs> says, Good evening, everybody in UK, and afternoon to the USA residents. And Debbie Melrose says, Wrong account. And tonight, terrors, everybody. It starts with a bit of this, then it goes into the middle of that, and that's the end of the episode. Right then, what do you think? I'm that's not right. Uh-huh. right then. <laughs> It begins with a spooky shot of a swing and a lock of flats and a, a, a sort of a oh, she child just sat in his... a picture through. Uh, it says, what is this? Is she joining? I don't know. I'm sure if she wants, she is joined. She'll be able to say something, won't she? You got distracted then, Kirby, didn't you? Yes. Uh, spinning mm. wheels of doom and then chucked out. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Is is she an Apple user or a Windows user? She's Apple, but I tried to uh, call her on her own and then add you lot, but it wouldn't let me do that either. Which is very, very, she very She could strange. use her phone. Yeah. What, on Skype? Or, uh, eh? Yeah. Like, if I have to get credit to call her. No, I have no. To buy no. Credit. She, could, she could use the Skype app to join. I don't know if she's got the Skype app. Ask her if she's got the Skype app. Can we get on with the bloody podcast? Jesus. Right. <laughs> As a little boy in uh, pinstripe um, uh, pyjamas is sort of sat in a room. They really do need to turn the light on for the poor little boy. His mummy comes in and uh, sort of alludes something to the wardrobe, which she's sort of sat facing. Um, uh, She looks like she's a nurse. She's having trouble with the lights. They don't seem to want to stay on. Oh, no, there's an on and off thing. No, that's a little... That's master, master, master. That's uh, a a kind of a routine. Yes, he it's needs lights turned, turned off and on. Yes, I know. She's doing a lights on off thing to sort of uh, appease his fear of what may or may not be in the wardrobe or cupboard or whatever you want to do. And then she tucks him up in bed. And she's a nurse, so she goes off to do a night shift. And then somebody shines a torch. Oh, it's him. Sorry. The boy shines a torch uh, on the wardrobe while he sort of watches it during the night in the other room. Um, his mum and dad, or we presume he's his mum and dad, uh, just having a sort of little goodbye, have a nice day at work thing. And while that's happening, he's saying, he's sending a message. And that message arrives in the TARDIS via the psychic note paper. And, and um, since, since, Master, 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 since uh, Ben couldn't join us, 
uh, he said 11 years ago that the scene from of the kid sending the message was the best thing about this entire episode. <laughs> yeah. That so the TARDIS, the TARDIS, <laughs> yeah, the TARDIS materializes in a puddle. Uh, and the uh, the three incumbents get out, and then they start doing a search around yeah, this proper it, it, it was it was Tom something. Baker who played Puddle Gum, remember? To try and find the source of this uh, okay, distress signal, uh, so they go around various flats and have little interviews with people, uh, various sort of that that minor... that felt uncom- uncomfortable. What? They're going to to me, it just felt uncomfortable going to all those. It was a bit weird to do it at night, but there you go. Yes. The, the episode's called Night Terrors. Um, and, yeah, so, so they go around all these flats, meet a few of the people we're going to see later in the episode. Um, and um, I'm just moving forward. So what happens next? I'm, oh, yeah. I'm updating the uh, spreadsheet so that yeah. I know who all... I actually walked past... Uh, Amy and Rory actually walked past the window with, with the little boy poking his sort of head through the window. The doctor noticed him. And, that, and that's um, the reason, you know, that uh, the little boy gets decides to capture uh, Amy and Rory because he uh, Rory says something that scares him. Maybe we should let the monsters gobble him up. Uh, I didn't get that bit. Fair enough. Anyway, so um, they they after sort of uh, having a brief brief meeting with the doctor in the sort of corridor place. Uh, by the way, I just want to say Brandon Moore says, sorry, I'm late. I was waiting for somebody to save me from the monsters. Um, anyway, Amy and Rory go into the lift, and uh, essentially the lift plummets. It don't um, so much fly, it's plummet. Yes. The doctor finds the appropriate flat and pretends oh, Deb- he's a Debbie social says, worker. Debbie uh, says, count me out tonight for now. We'll try some jiggery-pokery. Good, that's good. Tell her to do that jiggery-pokery, because the show's not the same without her. Anyway, so there's some real scary, the, um, and while the little boy's sort of um, shining his torch around and creating these really scary shadows, um, the little old lady that we met earlier on is taking one of the bins out to throw into a pile. Obviously, um, the, the bin men are on strike at this point, hence there's a great big pile of bin liners for the foxes and whatnot to uh, just attack. They're not in, in, in dumpsters or anything like that. They are just left out for the seagulls, foxes, whatever. Badgers, nighttime creatures may indeed just want to go. Anyway, so, uh, I'm moaning, aren't I? But you wouldn't see bins like not unless it's that there was a, like a, a strike uh, uh, you know, for the bin men. Bins are what you put your rubbish in, um, Kirby. Just so we were. I know. And the little old lady gets dragged into. I the... first heard that phrase in a goon show, probably when I was about twelve. Haven't heard it in Forty Towers when um, the um, hotel inspector. Uh, arrives. There's, towers, there's a, there's a few I things in the bin. Right after now. I was 12. For, when he says to uh, um, so the hotel inspector, oh, there, oh, there's a few things in the bin you might like. Um, Mr. Carnegie, uh, uh, well, can I uh, can I welcome Mr. You, Mr. Carnegie, Sybil, uh, the scavenger gourmet from the public health department. Where are you from? A scavenger or down here in the West Country? That that particular part of. Uh, oh, I'll move on. So, master, 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 oh, master. You know, when uh, the doctor is, um, wait, are you at the point where the doctor has gone into the flat? He's yet? in the flat and making himself at home at the moment, yes. Well, well, when uh, the dad is talking to the doctor about the, the boy's fears, uh, he says, oh, he thinks the, the old lady is a witch. Thank I you. discovered yesterday that is a really interesting joke, actually, because she played one of the witches in the 1990 uh, movie, The Witches, based on the Roald Dahl story. Right, okay. Thank you for that, Kirby. Anyway, uh, so the doctor makes himself at home and... uh, There's a lot of references. You know, there's a reference to the Doctor Who and the, what is it, Doomsday? Yeah, that was my second quote if someone had taken the first (laughs) Um, yeah so um, he makes friends with dad and then he goes and uh, makes friends with um, I can't remember the boy's name now George 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 that's it while Amy and Rory who are not dead they appear to be in a spooky house and start uh, skulking around the the corridors and um, 
the, the, uh, George really freaks out when when his door opens up, uh, and in comes Dad and uh, Doctor. And uh, so while that's going on, Mamie and Rory are skulking around this corridor, and um, looking for the light switch, no doubt. And they find a drawer with a glass eye in it. Ooh, it's a bit creepy. Um, Why was there they... a glass eye in that drawer? No, is it what? It's a doll's house. Doll's so house. Cl- and there's okay. pieces of doll everywhere. Yeah. Okay. So um, they establish uh, in George's bedroom that um, that this uh, the wardrobe is really scary. Uh, while the doctor messes around with the Rubik's cube and tries to keep George entertained. Now the funny thing about these particular scenes, uh, there's some bits in which George's voice doesn't quite match George. It sounds really weird, and some bits where it is actually his voice, uh, which sound okay. I never okay. noticed that. It's a very very strange. What? I didn't notice that. Just his voice mm-hmm. didn't seem right, uh, like an adult was trying to do an impression of a child. Now, in the in the confidential, uh, everyone said that the the actor who played the little boy was would never stop talking when he wasn't uh, acting. Mm. He's always chattering. Mm, just a couple of bits. And they, the they even had they even had a little bit of his doing that same chattering. Well, they uh, may not have liked the way he read a certain line, so uh, they may yeah. dub with another voice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It did sound dubbed in some areas. So anyway, they, the doctor says they mustn't open the wardrobe while uh, Amy and Rory are still skulking around corridors. And then there's this, these sort of shadows appear, of, which obviously we later see are these dolls. Meanwhile, the landlord appears with his, <laughs> his ferocious dog and uh, demands a bit of money and, of course, is told that he haven't quite got any yet. Uh, George is listening in, fascinated by the doctor's. I'm expecting uh, to hear the voice of uh, whatever that monster is saying. Prisoner Zero has escaped. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so the next obviously person Atraxi. is the Atraxi. The next person to, to go will be, of course, uh, the landlord who, who gets sucked into his carpet. It reminded me of that. Um, uh, landlord fell down to the ground. Um, master, I, master, hang on, let me finish. Pretty... What? Go ahead. Well, as he when he got sucked into the carpet and disappeared, I just love the attitude of the dog, who just all carried on as if nothing had yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, master, a couple of things about that. Yeah, go on. Then. First of all, I, th- I thought it was a very well done effect. Yeah, uh, they they lowered him into a a vat of slime. Green slime. Okay. Well, that's a clever way of doing it, wasn't it? Um, what's his name again? Kirby, isn't it? Wasn't it? was a really clever way of doing it. I did wonder. Yeah. Um, now, sorry. Uh, but also, yeah, when, like, when, yeah. he's, when he's talking to the dog and they're deciding on something to watch, he mentions Bergerac. Oh, did he? <laughs> I didn't and, know that bit. Oh, but, excuse but, me. Alexa, what's the notification? One new notification. I don't know. From Amazon Shopping. Yeah. Last month, you bought a oh, gentle wormer for dogs on sake. Amazon. Time and a place! How many stars would you rate it from one to five? Four! God's sake. I thought it was something interesting. Master, uh, hopefully I'll get a ding from this one. I Hang on. Had... Alexa is whispering at me now. It's very creepy. <laughs> oh, 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 Alexis. I don't care. Shut I up. To rate products. You can always go to your Amazon app. Yeah, shut Alexa, up. Alexa, stop. No, you just say shut up to her. She shuts up eventually. Um, where do we get up to? Sorry. Oh, yeah. So, Master, 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 whoa, 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 Master. Hopefully, whoa, whoa. I'll get a, hopefully I'll get a ding for this. But uh, I had heard of Bergerac, but not looked up to see what it was. Oh, marvellous. I forgot this bell. There's the bell. Can I do a backward ding so it does a ding? It was in the opposite created direction? by Robert Banks Stewart. Oh, wow, well, yeah, what great. The, the guy who who created Zygons, and yeah. it also at various times starred, among others... Louise Jameson. Louise Jameson. Yeah. Who's now in Emmerdale. Celia, Celia Emery. She, lives, she lived on, used to live on the Isle of Wight. Yes, Peter Delush. And, and, and Annette Badland. Who I can't seem to get hold of, despite having her email. Thank you. <laughs> Thank uh, you, sir. I have another. Uh, that was for me, not and, for and, you. Oh, and I noticed that Bergerac is available on BritBox. Marvelous. How splendid. So I, may, I may watch it. Yeah, great. Um, anyway, so Amy and Rory are still skulking around this house and really being freaked out. Um, 
while the doctor and dad, dad decides that he, he he sort of uh, wants the doctor out of the flat now because he's finding that she, that he's upsetting George, etc. etc. So they have a bit of a uh, no. The dad remind I'm the actor. I know the actor who plays dad. I can't remember his name at the top of the head, but he's he's quite a renowned actor now. He's been in lots and lots of stuff, films, TV, and stuff. So he's quite Daniel Mays. Yeah, him. Um, anyway, we we see the um, the old lady skulking around these corridors as well, uh, and obviously we'll soon see the the dad. Uh, sorry, the landlord, and. Um, Eventually, one of the creepy doll things, which um, uh, they sort of scream at and then laugh at, gets somebody. Or to, oh, it gets the landlord, doesn't it, and turns them into another doll. Creepy, creepy. But that would say the. Um, I was going to. You made me think, think of something. Oh yeah, the dad. You reminded me of the landlord. You know, James Corden's character, and uh, in, in the interactions between the two. He just had had that sort of. Uh, that feeling of that the the relationship the doctor had with the dad was very similar to yeah. the relationship that the doctor had with um, with Craig. Anyway, um, so moving forward to the landlord getting sucked into the carpet, and then um, yeah. And oh, of course, I did eventually, spot, I did spot a continuity error. Uh, you is did? He sitting on as, as the landlord is sitting on his chair, he's got that little um, aluminum meal on his uh lap mm. and all of a sudden the scene changes and it's on the tray table beside him okay don't you mean aluminium meal fine aluminium make me crazy aluminium yes that's the make one, yeah. me crazy I don't think we have aluminium in britain we have like aluminium tennis, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah i mean aluminium is only adding a a, a letter in an unusual place and well, let, in it I want to know where the TH is in Lieutenant. Hang on, let's yeah, have a listen. Where, where is, <laughs> yeah. where is the F? That's so pedantic, Mary. You should be a Doctor Who fan. Um, all right, then. Make me crazy, yeah. Alexa, how do you spell aluminium? Aluminium is spelled A-L-U-M-I-N-I-U-M. Do you want that one more time? No, I bloody well don't. Shut up. Spell it like that, yes. You pronounce it like that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know that. Don't know what? I said shut so up. What's the American spelling of aluminum. <laughs> well, you when you asked for that, my uh, Alexa right next to it spelled it the American way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh dear. Right, where am I up to? Oh yeah, sorry. The, so yeah, the, they open up the wardrobe and nothing scary comes out of it. But they do see a little. Except we finally dolls, see the doll's the, house. Uh, doll house. Yeah. Which we had to imply was in there. Well, it was in there, but we didn't. They didn't make a big deal of it at the time. And right. uh, yeah, the doctor's sort of trying to get to Dad, who's sort of um, then it sort of gives a hint that um that George sort of just appeared because they, they couldn't have babies or that his missus couldn't have babies and suddenly had, they had a, a child and he's starting to remember things and he can't, he also remembers that he's, you know, struggling to bond with George. Having this conversation while the poor nippers just sat on the bed watching and the doctor yeah. starts to think, hang on, he's yeah. not That must have been interesting. How'd they get like a birth certificate and stuff like that? How'd Probably they enroll in Psychic paper, Kirby. It's a science fiction fantasy TV show. Do you not know this? <laughs> I can be, I can be pedantic. Anyway, so uh, something scares George and he, he he throws the doctor and dad into the wardrobe, uh, therefore into the doll's house. Yeah, um, uh, um, Fred was laughing last night because you can see the two actors basically just running in place as they're being sucked in. Uh, uh, Terry Mars says, Adam, please stop talking to Alexa. Mine is talking at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Right, um, right. So Amy, Alexa, uh, oh, turn off God, the heat. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't find a <laughs> heat. Yeah, not surprised, mate. Right then. Um, yeah, so Amy and Roy still skulking around the corridors, and eventually, Amy gets dollified. I was a bit disappointed by Rory not getting um, particularly upset by that because you know uh, you must have thought that Amy had died, but then she's got a lot of catching up to do with Rory in the death department, isn't? Hasn't? Uh, yeah, you know, theoretically, she. since this since they swapped positions of this and uh, Curse of the Bad Plot, uh, she's supposed to be the ganger. 
but she's not wearing the the ganger outfit. It's kind of weird. So, so if that's the, the case, then gangers can turn into dolls. Oh, I see. I, I don't care. I'm no, I was, I was, I was, I was, uh, she's not the ganger. Oh, no, yeah. no, no, she's clearly not the ganger in there. Shut up, Kirby, honestly. Gosh. No, 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 she's, she is clearly not the ganger, but no. I'm wondering yes, I, why. I know what you're talking about. Notice. I know what you're getting at. Um, anyway, so the doctor, uh, sorry, uh, Amy and Roy, as I say, we're trying to keep the dolls out, but unfortunately, uh, uh, Amy gets dollified. Uh, and um, I like the, the big school thread. Odd things going on with the lights, which obviously somebody switching the lights on and off. And um, and then somehow, obviously, we find out at this point this is a doll's house, which has been manipulated by George. And. Um, George, George, George. They get, the they get cornered. It's a bit like um, you know, a base under sheets and anything uh, by all these. This is uh, the doctor and uh, dad get cornered by all these dolls who are coming in to attack them and stuff. And um, the doctor tries to talk George into um, something I can't remember what it was now. Uh, what was he trying to talk it that he was trying to coax George into? something and then not being afraid of stuff not being afraid of stuff that's right and then dad decides to be a dad and go down and give him a cuddle so i love you you're my son you're my son i love you da, 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 da. now i haven't got a problem before i get, get into the what i thought of it i haven't got the problem mainly about you know that things being solved by love because i know that, that, that there's a bit of a theme in this particular series uh so as it's a sort of theme of oh, I've got a major issue with that, it's quite nice that love can solve it. If everybody loved each other, there wouldn't be wars or anything. This is, I mean, yeah, we're, we're going to have an episode can I in like speak? two weeks, I'm two not, weeks which be is quiet. the same Be quiet. I'm not religious or anything. But the the um, the ideal of Jesus Christ, his what he says, if, you know, and I do agree his, he existed, but I'm not, I'm not religious, but I, I believe he was there. But his ideal of if everybody loved each other, there would be no war. He's right. Unfortunately, we're human beings and we're useless at that sort of stuff. Um, yeah. Clearly, because there's wars everywhere, aren't there? Um, so <laughs> there's people blowing up balloons and the people send, sending balloons into space. It's obviously, obviously going to cause problems uh, um, and get their balloons shot down. And just as leaders of countries acting like children. It's absolutely what what is the world coming to? Back to the back to the real world. Anyway, so after um, the, the cuddle that Dad gives uh, George, um, <laughs> the, the little old lady sort of finds herself asleep in the bins, which is really funny. Yes. <laughs> got to make out how she got there, and maybe she had, just thought she had a really good night. Amy and Rory appear in the lift, just looking really awkward, <laughs> and yeah. um, yeah. landlord gets up and um, gives the dog a cuddle. The dog thinks, "Well, I don't really want a cuddle. I'm quite happy here, thing." All right. Then Mum turns home from work, and everybody's having a really great time in the flat. And uh, she loved the, the sort of um, the greeting that the doctor gives her. Um, yeah. He's also got yeah. a parking ticket, which is quite amusing. Um, this is very similar to the greeting he he gave people in obviously um, the lodger. Um, it pretending he doesn't really know how to interact with humans. Of course, it's a bit silly because he does know how to interact with humans. And um, yeah, and off off they go and have a sit on the bench, and then we have a little. Another scene, the, 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 the scenes within the TARDIS when the Doctor's looking at his little monitor up to the point when uh, River Song's born um, were oh, pregnant, not pregnant, pregnant, not pregnant. And now it's just uh, images of his death um, sort of date on there. I mean, would you really keep that as your screensaver for all that time? He must realise and be able to remember what it's saying. It's just, or is it the TARDIS reminding him, oh, you, you're he's, supposed no, to he's die? No, puzzling, he's puzzling about it. He got it. He got that from the Tesselector. I know, but it's um, it's every episode. It's on the screen. Okay, we get it. Uh, you know, <laughs> like, well, it's been on the screens that we forgot. You know, so yeah. then it's it's for the viewer. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, oh, wait a minute. Yes, this is going to happen. They they had to tack that on because originally when they filmed this, uh, it was Eye Patch Lady was going to show up at one point. I still think they could have done away with it, but that's fine. Anyway, so it's, Night's it's, Terrors. And, 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 and oh, but then they also do the TikTok goes the clock. Even yeah. for the doctor. This episode was supposed to be in the first half of the yeah. series. Yeah. Well, they yeah. did a good job uh, avoiding the, the thought that Amy might be a ganger, because uh, obviously ganger Amy had certain clothes on, didn't she? Yeah, okay. they, they, they swapped it with, with bad plot. Good. Um, right, so, uh, yeah, I'll, again, uh, Kirby... Um, 
pre because I haven't seen this episode. For, it's like it was for me. I remember hit elements of it, uh, and yeah, you know, what it was not basically about, but I remember sort of certain elements of it. So it was like watching it as a new episode for me, and um, I, I I was expecting it to be terrible because Kirby said it was going to be once again, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was sort of like a typical sort of mid season episode. I, um, it was. It's called Night Terrors. I can see that, you know, if you're a child watching that and there would have been children watching it, you would have been bloody terrified. There were certainly yeah. creepy things yeah. in it for adults, let alone children. Uh, yeah. And I did a great job with the music and, and, and the filming and, and stuff. And it, I don't think it, it was a situation where it didn't really make sense. I know people that I seem to remember people getting grumpy that every single thing that we thought was human that turned out to be alien. And it seems to be constant in Doctor Who now that anything, you know, that bad happens in the story is, is alien based and of course this is what happened here i mean it is a science fiction fantasy tv show so the, is it? it is about a, a bloke that flies around in time space all around the universe is so inevitably there's going to be an alien influence somewhere on the line and i didn't f- feel as if that was a, a badly represented by a, a, an alien child being brought up by people that's been done before um and all in all, I think they did a pretty good job with this, in, especially obviously looking at it's a Mark Gatiss story, isn't it? And uh, I don't think Mark's a bad writer. I don't think he's done... He's particularly good at spooky, and he's done a good great job. And I think a lot of the spooky with this one uh, was uh, created by the brilliance of the directing. But um, I didn't dislike it at all. I, I, I felt... Because we're coming up to a story soon, aren't we, that features James Corden again. So it's nice to see the Doctor having that interaction with, with sort of... Uh, residential human beings uh, so because he's going to have it again in a couple of episodes time and um again like like mary's i know mary loves uh matt smith's doctor and uh, deb sort of walked past while i was watching it oh i love matt smith and i think we can all safely say that matt smith was a great doctor and considering he came after tenant who was a great doctor um and she said that uh, it went wrong when capaldi became the doctor it wasn't capaldi's fault but i'm just saying um on the whole I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was okay. I'm not saying it's the best episode ever, but I, I, I did enjoy watching this one. Uh, what did you think about it then, Kirby? I I know I've been grumping along about this for yes, the last have. several weeks. Yeah. Every uh, episode yeah. of this series which, you've been grumping I, along. I, I have to, I've got to admit I was wrong. Of course. Yeah, well, you were. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know why I got such a negative thing about in. Uh, in 2011, I wasn't negative about it. The, some, I'm not quite sure. Maybe just time made me think. I mean, it's not the best of the season. No. Nope. Not not by a long shot, but it's nope. not bad. We've got it's a not very good one coming up next, as, I can tell you that. Huh? We've got a very good one coming up next. Oh, yeah, one of the best ever mm. next week. Uh, but this this was not bad plot. This was... It wasn't well, bad plot. Wasn't bad plot. You said that was rubbish and it wasn't too bad. <laughs> no, bad plot is still. <laughs> There's <laughs> elements are bad, but it's still pretty good. To be fair. But, yeah, but, but no, that night terrors. Night terrors is is a nice average. Uh, let's spooky Doctor Who. He's a spooky Doctor Who. Yes. I think I think one of the problems that I might have had with it is that it completely because of the swap and the fact that it doesn't have anything to do with the season arc series arc mm. that uh it's just it's just kind of there i mean mm. here are rory and amy who have just had all this business with their daughter who's suddenly all the things that happened in let's kill hitler and uh they're acting as if none of that happened if we look at these chronologically well, I mean, she does know what happens to her daughter. She becomes yeah. her song, and so that probably is reassuring. So maybe yeah. she doesn't have to dwell on it. But also and, the and doctor's the companions is, the in is, time is, want to get on with a bit of adventure, don't they? And they don't keep on harking about other family members all the time. I know they do reference them, and I think obviously River is a family member of both the doctor and of, of, of Amy and Rory. So I don't think it's a major problem. I know what you're saying, Kirby, that that's probably what you had in your mind, that they, there wasn't really much of a mention of of river yeah and so someone somewhere pointed out that uh, in let's kill hitler uh they at the very beginning amy and rory were asking the doctors you're so hard to get a hold of whereas uh george could get a hold of the doctor very easily by basically praying to him he's an alien <laughs> <laughs> but no no this this, this 
I enjoyed it. I, I've now watched I've watched it three times in the past three days. Okay. And and in our current run throughs, that's very rare. Thank you, Kirby. Um, Terry Marl says, Adam, have you got a dog snoring in the room with you? Oh, yes. Star is always, always snoring. Uh, yeah. <laughs> She's snoring away. It's like having Andy Nanny tucked in the, in the corner. Probably, <laughs> I wouldn't have thought Andy knew it would smell quite as bad as a star does, but there you go. Okay, Andy, everybody. You know. <laughs> That's a bit harsh. Sorry, uh, Andy, that wasn't me. Um <laughs> to Mary. Well, like Kirby, I actually was dreading watching this. I, too, don't remember that it was a very good episode, so it's like, oh, my God, i got to sit through another, you know, mediocre episode. But, but it turns out that it is really scary for yeah, a good 30 minutes or more. I mean, they really, yeah. the, the director really plays yeah. up Great you know, with the shadows actually. and the half seen things yeah. and the and the, the dolls giggling and all that. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I found it to be very scary. Yeah. Um, uh, and it makes the uh, um, the landlord, too, is part of that scary yeah, landscape. He's, you know, he's got a scary face and he's threatening, you know. Yeah. Um, Prisoner Zero has escaped. Yeah. Um, but then. But then the last oh five minutes or so, it turns into the song "Believe" from Polar Express, <laughs> and everything becomes you know wonderful again. You know everybody mm. loves everybody, and mm. and it's like whoa, the whole thing just kind of evaporates. Um, it just turns into mush. Um, so I'm saying we're probably remembering you know how I, I don't want to totally say disappointing, but how it. I mean I wasn't satisfied with the resolution. The ending, yeah. Yeah, so sense. then I think that's why we may be hanging on to this n- negative. I suppose it was quite a difficult, thing, you know, a difficult thing to end, really, because it was sort of a, a roller coaster ride of, of, of you know, scariness, and then think, well, actually, yeah. we need to get out of yeah. this. And I think um, yeah, love is not a bad way yeah, of getting I've out of a scary so, situation. Uh, you know. And, and we, when, when Mary's done, I've got something else to say too. I mean, when, uh-huh. when we were kids and we were scared, I was. Scared. I remember, I remember as a child, I wasn't that that young to be there, I'm probably about 10 or 11 and there was a, t- a, a series on ITV called Jesus of Nazareth in which Robert Powell played Jesus and there was a very graphic scene and I think they might, how I remembered it was, the, the nails being put into Jesus' feet and Ooh. I probably, when I was watching it on the telly, I probably fr- I closed my eyes and looked away because I thought cause it, they, I thought they were going to show it and in my mind I saw it and when I went to bed that night I had to tuck my feet up because I imagined somebody was banging their nail into my feet and it was, Ooh. that really sort of scared me and that, that was and then you'd start imagining things under the bed and you know, uh, that's yeah, I was, I was about that. ten or eleven, and that sort of encapsulated that really well. And what I could have done with at that point, if I, but was a cuddle, someone to come in and give me a hug and say it's all right, it's all right now, or just stay with me. And that's what I used to do to my kids when they were scared about stuff. I would stay with them, hold them all night if needs be, and um, and that was the cure of this whole situation for me. And I think that that makes sense. It was a bit mushy, like you say. Mary, but this is this is basically a child who was scared of the dark, scared of uh, monsters in his wardrobe, and th- for me as a parent, the only cure of that it was love and a cuddle, and I think that makes sense. Let Mary finish too. Uh, I am finished, really. Oh, okay. Uh, I I thought of one other thing. Oh no. Th- that <laughs> no, it's it, it's something that bothered me eleven years ago. Mm. That. Uh, it still bothers me, but it's it's better. Right. And that is that the uh, the whole business of what George is is just it's it's one big info dump. Oh yeah, where yeah. You can barely where yeah. you can barely understand it. Right. And uh, that it, just it probably leaves doesn't work. Sense of you know that it just finished too quickly. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I didn't. I didn't like the the info dump because it would have been interesting to know more yeah. about. And uh, when I was watching with Fred, she was a little confused too. Watching that last yeah. night, I believe it was. And yeah, like, was I basically that? said, I basically said George is is like a cuckoo. And she said, Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think they could have dwelled on that a little bit more and made it yeah, clear. They did yeah, rush. It... They did rush the ending a little bit. That's yeah. true. Um, but I think that a lot of it was very good. Um, uh, yeah, I suppose you could moan about any. Like I say, you always say we always pick holes in, in the, even the best uh, Doctor Who stories. Uh, yeah, this I, isn't I'm one of the best I'm ones. Wondering, as we go into next week, well, the thing is, I won't be on next week. Oh my yeah, goodness! Where's, where's really? Your, where's your hallelujah. <laughs> But, but we're doing a pretty good episode. <laughs> I'm, I'm still I'm still going to watch it. But the thing is, is that I I'm wondering if my remembering that it is an excellent episode, if it's going to do the other. Way. I think that's <laughs> yeah. highly yeah. unlikely. I hope not. I hope not because it was really good. I I, I would be disappointed if that was the case because I, I'm I know oh. that uh, Karen Gillan is absolutely amazing. Oh that yeah, story. I don't think that's probably why we loved it so one. much because she was. So, so yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna guess that it's going to still be good, and I will do something next week. Oh, it's, it's that I will be watching a 1926 movie. Yes. Okay. You could post your review. Yes, you could indeed. Yes, on yes. your own request for feedback. Yes. <laughs> Just to give people a bit of a head start. Talking of your request for feedback, I think that's a good way to segue into that particular element of the show. Okay, let me refresh. That's the main thing. Yeah, see, something popped up right as I uh, refreshed. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. And that's interesting. Is that? Oh, well, thank you. Uh, the, <laughs> now, the first one is Lillian Robin. Uh, yes, I have Jamie Dodgers with a picture of Jamie Dodgers in front of the scene where uh, the doctor says, ask if you got any Jamie Dodgers. And she says, this story is good and creepy. I like it. I'll be posting feedback here for the month of February as I'm not available Sunday afternoons until next month. Oh, Lillian, what are you doing? Modeling stockings, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, this now the whole thing changed the order of messages. Okay, Neil James. Night Terrors. Brilliant performance from Matt Smith and the guest cast do well. The peg dolls are really creepy, but I'm afraid to say this all feels like filler. It always leaves me with definite fear her vibes. And that is not a good thing. Two stars out of five. It's better than two stars. Sorry. Uh, Mr. M says, we're dead, aren't we? Hey, that was my quote. <laughs> Night Terrors by Mark of the Ronnie. <laughs> 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 this is a good, solid story. I like the little kid, and the doll's house is a great setting to explore. <laughs> Karen Gillan is hot. Yeah. So it's a shame she gets shrunken down. <laughs> Daniel Mays is a bit wasted in this role. I want to see him as a villain. Uh, but is good nonetheless. I like Evil Purcell. Oh, and the old lady getting eaten by bin bags is hilarious. The peg dolls are creepy, especially the transformation. Why are they putting all the scary things in a cupboard in his bedroom? Eight, eight out of ten. Next time, more Amy duplicates. Does someone have a fetish? Yes. Uh, then in Kirk uh, says Amy gets dolled up. Ah, his, oh, very good. His, Go on his script <laughs> too. Is that it? Yep, that's all I've got. Okay, okay. I'm just send you over another piece of. Uh, oh no! Uh, text. Um, but no, while no, you, I'm the one that got that. No, I sent him something else that. through. No, no I sent no. him something else through. But while you're digesting that, we'll play a bit of this. Well, good evening, Tony Lake versus Admin here. Just got six o'clock Sunday, gonna have a bath, and uh, yeah, as usual, I did my ironing yesterday. Uh, you know, Kirby's really pleased to hear this. Um, and I watched Night Terrors, which was rather good, wasn't it? I mean, Mark Gatiss really does write some very dark, very strange stuff, and uh, this was no no exception, was it? You know, it really was a, uh, it really was very good. You know, you used to understand the little boy who's terrified, you know, as a lot of little children are, you know, they find the things in the night. Um, I like the, the put things in the cupboard, and this was actually where everything did go, um, including the Doctor and Alex, eventually. And it's, you start to find, you know, you realise that uh, Amy and 
Roy had been captured and uh, in a doll's house, as it turns out. So I think, uh, I think actually, I, remember, I do remember that from last time, but I think actually we worked that out as where it was, because you saw the doll's house in the cupboard. Um, when they they were going around in the flats and there was these two little girls, who thought twins of evil? My God. Oh, yeah, I forgot you about know, that. And I did wonder if they were going to be part of the, the story, but uh, no, they weren't. They were just sort of psych out. As the landlord, though, was a very good, very... Uh, menacing and then the old deer who ended up in the beans was um <laughs> a good bit of common relief that was but i think it's um, a very good story in the way it's um nothing was quite what it seemed you know you understood that suddenly there's this little boy who actually wasn't a little boy and when alex suddenly remembers you know he sees a picture and there's his wife two months before two weeks before she gave birth and clearly not pregnant and then she, she can't have kids and they'd all forgotten that and it's quite convenient that everybody must have forgotten this you know it must have come with surprise to uh presuming they'd be uh, their in-laws and family when suddenly the two couple who cast a baby produce a baby out of nowhere. So, um, yeah, I'll tell you this one, thing just uh, just glide over that one, don't really think about too hard about it. But uh, I think it was very good in the way it was, it was a little boy who was controlling it and the doctor slowly worked it out, you know, he was some sort of alien and uh, like a cuckoo in the nest, as they said there. I thought it really was very good. And when Alex, at the end, you know, goes in to rescue his son, you know, it's... Um, I think I've got some of my eye at that point, you know, it's just sort of a, just that my eye, yeah, yeah. because uh, interestingly, that that little boy would be about the same age as Zach, because Zach is just about seven and a half now, isn't it? And it's, uh, you know, as any father would to their own child, they would, get, they would go straight in there, wouldn't they? Um, so uh, we don't realise, what, what's happened to those dolls, those figures, the dolls at the end, you know, presumably um, those dolls there, were they were also characters of people, real people, did they all come back? You know, they told the landlord going back. Presumably the old deer went back as well, but uh, the, the two dolls that were already in the house, did they uh, did they, they get sent back to where they came from? Who knows? Who knows? But I think it was it was a very very good story. I think it was uh, the relationship between uh, Amy and Rory, and Amy's trying to get Rory to, to be, take control and stand up and be a man, which I suppose Rory did when he was Rory Centurion, but he just doesn't really do that, does he? Um, and the doctor, the doctor slowly working out what's going on. You can see him ticking out, you know, what, what, what am I missing? What am I missing? What am I missing? And off we go. And of course, Lady is still with the uh, the dead doctor picture. You know, we're still, or that's still to resolve. You know, of course, we don't know how it all happens. But um, I think, all in all, this was a very, very good story. So enjoyable. And ironing tip today. Make sure you've got the ironing board at the right height. You want to get your knees under it, you can sit up straight and then you don't do your back in. So there you go. Be seeing you. Yeah, um, yeah, back. <laughs> you, you, you know, they, they missed, they, because they've recorded these out of sequence and they, they couldn't have done it. But you know what they should have had come out, come out of the cupboard? I don't Hitler. know, but I'm sure you're going to tell me. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> because they, put, they left Hitler in the cupboard in the previous week. Yes. Uh-huh. Hitler. Okay, yes. so, so so am I re- reading Lynn and Terry next? You are. Okay, this is Lynn and Terry's feedback. This is a very dark tale. Well, it was written by that chap, Mark Gatiss. The doctor, after receiving a psychic message from Earth, then finding it was a small child, should have realized something was amiss there. Jamie Oram plays a terrified George very well. Great interaction between Smith and Mays in the kitchen. Seems it was unscripted. They were very funny. The Peg Dolls are singing a children's rhyme, which reappears in Closing Time in The Wedding of River Song. This story is so reminiscent of the 60s Who, making the kids hide behind the sofa. Oh, dear, and he died again. (laughs) The ginger doll turned into a ginger peg doll. (laughs) Mrs. Rossiter was funny in both scenes with a rubbish bag pile. Uh, The doctor sorts it all out. Hang on. That means there are aliens living among us. Oh, no, sorry. Zygons. That, that's already a known fact. That's why Torchwood exists. Yes. Oh, no, next week there are two Amys. Did Rory wish very hard? <laughs> no, Mr. M did. Stay safe, everybody, Linda and Terry. Uh, and I've got a couple of things there. Yeah, she, Mrs. Rosser was funny in both scenes with a rubbish bag pile, but that wasn't the... Uh, old lady actress being pulled into the rubbish bins uh, bags. It was a stunt double. It was in the confidential. We do know how films and TV dramas work, Kirby. (laughs) And and, uh, what was the other thing? 
Well, I don't know. I dread to think. I, I don't, I don't tell me that the, she, the she police remind, box that we called TARDIS was a prop. I don't know. I, what are you going to tell us? what it was. Hey? Sorry. Okay. You're going to tell me that the dolls were created by some um, craft person and they're not real dolls. No. Anything else that, uh, that secrets from the making, making of TV and film that, uh, no, they, no, <laughs> I, I did like their design. What, oh, the oh, old lady I, or the I bins. Now, I, re- I remember now he was saying this reminiscent of the sixties who making the kids hide behind the sofa. Well, 11 years ago, uh, Mary, your phone's ringing. Are you done? Mary's phone's ringing. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, got a text message. Oh, it's a phone uh, uh, 11 years ago, uh, Adam, you said, and you said that you posted it on Facebook, which, of course, we, I, I'd never be able to find it from 11 years ago. Yeah. Said that uh, you had taken a picture of Izzy at the time when she was watching um, the astronaut episode and she's hiding behind a cushion okay yeah it, it, that would be that's nice probably around the, when they when they're around that scary house with the, with the silence yeah. oh that's right right moving on hello to the team Map podcast this is ian kirk hello ian night terrors by matt gettis I just want my 350 quid. The first 11th Doctor story had him been summoned by Amelia because she was afraid of the crack in her bedroom wall. Well, got a crack Here, in living room he's summoned wall. by George for a similar reason. These are properties owned by the local council, that is, local government, and rented out to low-income people. It is ridiculous to have that bloke as the landlord. Mm. It would have been better to have him as a loan shark. Mm -hmm. By the way, I have only just realised that A Christmas Carol, a story about a loan shark, has an actual shark in it. (laughs) Don't mention Paradise Towers. I just did, but I think I got away with it. (laughs) The location was Bristol. Close to Wales, but unusual for modern who. Like the girl with the scribble monster in Fear Her, it turns out that the boy, George, is actually an alien changeling. He is a kama 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 chameleon. <laughs> in the previous story, the TARDIS crew put Hitler in the cupboard. Now it is their turn. Amy is hot. She's an absolute doll. A cheap episode. When the Doctor says, it's off the scale, he did not mean the budget. Although Sapphire and Steel would have stretched this to six episodes. Yes. <laughs> the answer is love. They might have used that before. And later. No balloons were harmed in the making of this feedback. Bye for now. Thank Ooh, you. I wonder, Ian. is Sapphire and Steel on BritBox? That would be nice. I don't know. All I know no. is that when I used to Let watch Sapphire, when I used to watch Sapphire and Steel. Huh? Take what? my word for it. Okay. Oh, darn. Well, I, well, I do I do have uh, some Sapphire and Steel that I purchased. Thank you for that. Anyway, I do have uh, memories of watching Sapphire and Steel though, when it was on quite a long time ago now. Um, obviously, David McCallum uh, was in it, and I just remember him as the Invisible Man. And, of course, Joanna Lumley, I just remembered her at the time of being Purdy, and I used to think she was quite old then, you know, when she did Sapphire cool. and Steel. And now look at her! <laughs> I, I remember David McCallum as the man from UNCLE, so there. Yeah, and I really don't so understand do why... why and um, and, Joanna... and mm. I also remember him as I saw him live playing uh, King Arthur in Camelot. Thank you, Kirby. I just was trying to say that I'm very surprised that Joanna Lumley hasn't been in Doctor Who, uh, being a national treasure and all that. When I say national treasure, I'm talking about Britain. And uh, Did you know that Great Britain, Kirby, is just the biggest of the, all the islands of Britain? Uh, yes. That's, that's why it's called Great Britain, did you know that? Yes, why are you lecturing me? Just trying to goad you into stuff right then okay mary this hasn't happened for a while but here we go oh, yeah. it's how oh, you my. are supposed and, uh, to read auntie butcher's be, feedback kirby, be ready you're gonna be kirby's gonna be queued up here soon i'm i'm queued up for the for the for my bit and kirby's probably asleep carry on okay um this of course is from the great 
Ellen T. Butcher. It's pantophobia. Oh, no, it isn't. Or George was the monsters all the time. <laughs> 20 megabiters. Night terrors is, of course, a closely studied contemplation of fear, its sources and effects. We see a situation which has overwhelmed all involved because easy solutions and false focuses have been constructed to cope with the anxieties that are dominating their lives. These constructs are not tackling or elucidating the real problems and are shown hurting those on the periphery too. Such denial can never serve anyone in anyone's interests. The resolution is simple, but nevertheless hard to achieve trust by figuring out the truth and achieving acceptance and a real human connection. It should be noted that some might say that. Did you interrupt that, Kirby? No, I did not. No, no, because it's not it's not the time yet. It Mm. should be noted that some might say that such apparently magical creatures and events as appear here have no place in Doctor Who. In fact, now, Kirby, Doctor Who. It's a, it's a science fiction fantasy TV show. No, it was time for him to put in some might say, and you, he didn't. I did. Some. And you talked over it, didn't you? No, I did not. Oh, I some... did. I did. Oh, all right. <laughs> I forgot that you That's had That's all right then, too. Mary. <laughs> I wanted I'm to sorry. tell Kirby off. <laughs> I'm rusty on this, and uh, yeah. I haven't come up with Ben's all of Ben's little things. Yeah. Um. Its capacity to keep vague whether these events are happening physically or part of some shared delusion gives it plenty of license to tell this tale. Regardless of the nature of the manifestation, all the doctor needs to do is work out where did all uh, where did it all go wrong. Mm. We also learn that it's not only the Nestine who have a pretty grim notion of what a kid's doll should be like. All in all, Night Terrors is one of those stories peppered lightly within 21st century Doctor Who, particularly with a slight plot, few characters, and a very limited setting. But bags of atmosphere, quality acting, and a strong central concept. It has some things in common with the story Fear Her, but avoids the key pitfall of that tale by not being rubbish. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> This golden age just won't lay down and sparkles whether it is delivering a genuine story arc or a solid, spooky, standalone narrative. This story is perhaps 10 minutes too short, as the all-pervading creepiness could definitely have been sustained this much longer. Mm. Next up, Doctor Who and the Two Amys, or Will Nobody Ever Learn Not to Go on Holiday with Doctor Who? (laughs) Yeah, with the Doctor. Yeah, that's better. You can say Doctor Who if you like. No. No, it shouldn't. I, you shouldn't I think, call I think Miss, Missy established that, um, that Doctor Who is one of his names. No. Pardon? I refuse. <laughs> refuse, do you? Okay, right. Uh, now, now uh, Master, Master, the, oh, you, you were talking about uh, Joanna Lumley. Uh, I was. In 1986... Sidney Newman suggested Lumley for the role of the Doctor, but his idea was dismissed. Plus, remember, she did play the Doctor. I was going to say, wasn't she? She did play the, the Doctor, uh, that's yeah, right. She, 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 was, she was in uh, the spoof. Yeah. yeah. The Curse of Fatal Death, that one. Yes, yes, yeah, she was in that, yeah. Whenever you say Joanna Lumley, I think of Absolutely Fabulous. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think of all the travel shows that she does. Uh, and yeah, she quite an old lady now she's still is, beautiful is, is, is abfab on uh rip box no. uh, yes 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 it is all right what what's on brick box abfab yeah i think deb's watched all of those quite recently actually look look at that they're all there good yeah they're all there because they they used to be on uh, netflix and they uh disappeared good i can watch these Oh, marvellous. Let's see if nothing, make sure nothing's coming through on the live feed. Uh, what have we got here, then? Um, Terry Miles, we thought it was that he was afraid he was going to be sent away f- from his parents, as obviously in, in regards to George, I would imagine. Right, uh, who wants to have a look at DoctorWhoNews.net just in case there's something interesting on it? Well, Nobody, what a and, surprise. Master, master, master. No, that there was the, the, the interesting the interesting 
pictures that came out yesterday that the BBC pulled very, very, very quickly. Yeah, tell me. Oh, it's, they leaked the new uh, console. Ring. Oh, yes, I saw that. I like it. Everybody else is moaning oh, about I it. Oh, I loved it. Oh, I, I like it. it. So Somebody it's said it's too ready. clean. Well, it's about time it got a clean, for goodness sake. Yeah, but, but uh, then after I first saw those pictures, then I went out later to find them again. Yeah. And particularly on Twitter, and there's copyright strikes everywhere, which means that is the console room. Okay. What's the problem? I, I, huh? What is the problem with people? What do you mean? What's the problem with it being white? I don't understand what the issue is. Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, RTD has gone for this coral style sort of dark um, one, and we've had whites in the past. Haven't we? I think it's lovely. I don't, I don't, I'll, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll put a picture of it on the uh, the group group feed. I'm not going to put it on Facebook because the BBC or somebody, Disney maybe, does not like no. the actual picture out there. No, I don't. That's fine. But, but I'll show you, Mary, in just a minute. But it's already right. out there. It's not difficult to find, is it? Let's yeah. face it. Um, huh? I? What, Mary? I said I'm looking forward to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's good. You'll, you'll have it here in a second. It's an amalgamation, isn't it, of the, the, uh, yes. the this, Eccleston this Tenants says TARDIS not concept. A, not official, but if they're pulling this image down, it's official. Yeah. Okay. Uh-oh. Okay, Doctor Who news. Uh, there's not a lot here, to be fair. Um, all they've got is Doctor Who magazine issue 587, which has got a lovely face of evil. You know, one of the robots with the red eyes on the cover. It's a beautiful cover. Um, that's a, as a comic of uh, the 14th Doctor, Prisoner of the Daleks. Uh, and uh, it's a prime cuts, Russell T. Davis. Uh, I mean, I haven't actually bought Doctor Who magazine for a long time, but I, I've got a funny feeling it's still very good. It does actually say... Uh, so it's a Panini magazines now. It's made by, and of course, Panini make football stickers and all sorts of stuff. And it used to be a Marvel product, Doctor Who magazine. So, um, but it it looks fab, uh, this particular issue. And I think the magazine in the whole, on the whole, is is a fab magazine. Of course, I had used to get it all the time when Alistair used to pr- provide uh, artwork for it because I'd always be around his house looking at the artwork he was sending off to it, and it was very exciting. You know, him showing me this sort of work in progress, and then within six months, it's actually in the magazine. Um, but obviously that doesn't happen anymore with with them uh, with Doctor Who magazine. Uh, I suppose um, we should give uh, a shout out to our sponsors. I haven't actually um, contacted them then yet as to whether is this is going one to continue. Dot co dot UK? Whether this is going to continue uh, for 2023, but nevertheless, I don't have a probably the benefit of being a sponsor of this show is of course people go back and listen to programs we recorded over 10 years ago, and of course the sponsors that were in it then if they're still in business now are still always going to get a mention it's it's quite a, quite a good value in, in my view yeah, I was, uh, i'll business. always mention them yeah mm. my one comment about the that idea for the console room is that it's pretty sterile looking yeah but i like that it gives me it gives me an element of those 1970s space things and always all the spaceships are always so pristine until star wars okay. came along and and decided that uh, quite rightly so to make spaceships look old and battered. Not, I love that too, but I quite like yeah. this, this sort of um, feeling. And remember that film? I haven't watched it. Well, I haven't watched Here, it for years I and guess. years. I can't even remember what it was like. But remember the um, uh, Space Odyssey, is it? The 2001 Space Odyssey or something like what it's called? Oh, yeah. um, that was yeah. all pristine and clean. But I think they have to be. Spaceships do have to be quite clean, don't they? Real ones? Well, real, real ones, yes, but... That actually live in are not going to stay that way. Remember the uh, yeah. alien, you know that. Was, yeah. That is what I think of as you know more realistic. Yeah, and yeah, of that, that was that, and that was really unusual at the time. John, John Carpenter, who uh, uh, was he part of Alien? I think. Quite possibly so. Yeah. Well, he actually pioneered that a little bit with a, a film he made before that. Uh, the writer of Alien, uh, Dan O'Bannon, also wrote a film for John Carpenter that was originally a student film called Dark Star. And in that, the ship is extremely lived in. And that was very unusual at the time. Thank you very much. Dark, Dark Star is, is funny. Is it? <laughs> and it, has a, it has a funny sequence in it that uh, turned into the idea for Alien. 
he basically turned a very funny alien scene into a very menacing alien. But like I say, I mean, if you remember the obviously the TARDIS uh, for back back in the day, um, it was always fairly clean looking, wasn't it? I quite like it, but I think in some ways it's about time that we had a little bit of that in Doctor Who. Um, the I mean, of and of course, had so many interesting things going on in his. You know, he had the, yeah. the old car seat. And... Yeah, I love the steampunk as well. I think I like all. I think something different. Is nice. Obviously, they're not going to keep it long term, are they? To be fair, but I, I'd like it. I'd like. I mean, I think about the other way that um, um, Shooty's costume is quite orange and black sort of plaid thing. It's quite colourful, isn't it? And he's obviously going to be mm-hmm. quite a colourful incarnation. And I so think it would make him stand out, doesn't it? Having a plain white background, <laughs> possibly. I don't know. Now, of course, it's him in that environment. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Of course, uh, the, this could possibly not be the interior of the TARDIS at all. Okay. Mm-hmm. We, yeah, they haven't painted it yet. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> but okay. the fact that... Oh, yeah, and uh, Radio Times does not have any pictures, but they say Doctor Who's new TARDIS interior is an impossible logic-defying set. Oh. Cool. I'm looking uh, forward to it. How exciting. Very excited. Especially, you know, I, a lot of people are moaning I'm about the Disney. Funny. Okay. There are it people, says mm, uh, we have, really. we've got a number of big reveals. Uh, one thing we still have no sense of is just what the newly designed TARDIS interior will look like, although we've received a few little teases from executive producer Joel Collins. Uh Yes. Well, I'm saying I'm very excited about that. I, I'm excited about the, the input that Disney Plus are having. And I don't think they're going to have major input into the, into the the way Doctor Who is, because it is what it is. But the fact that Disney Plus, you know, are, are interested in it, 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 it's I personally think it's it's good uh, for Doctor Well, you Who. know, last week RTD said that uh, he's got enough money now that he can do spinoffs. Again. Yeah, I know. You told me that last week. OK, right then, moving on. I'm Doctor... telling you then mm. this week, too. Good. Doctor Who News. Oh, sorry, Doctor Who. Do... Oh, do... Who1.co.uk. You made me do it all wrong, Kirby. Is um, Who1.co.uk? Latest products. Uh, Ice Kings, uh, which is, oh, let's say, uh, oh, it's a 12th Doctor. It says, Maureen O'Brien reads an action-packed original adventure of the 12th Doctor as played by, on screen by Peter Capaldi. I'll be enthralled to hear what her impression of the 12th Doctor would be like. Uh, Ninth <laughs> Doctor Adventures, Hidden Depths. Interesting that um, the actress that plays one of the 10th Doctor's companions appears to be in the picture on the cover. But there's sea devils and whatnot. Um... The blurb says, Seas of Titan, uh, out on Saturn's moon. These are the titles. Titan, an outpost all but forgotten by Earth's struggles against the the Oz. Very strange writing here. As the Doctor joins explorers deep in the methane seas, they discover a hidden civilization. But will the sea devils prove to be the colonia? Colonies. Question mark, question mark. I know, I see that. (laughs) (laughs) Salvation or its final destination. Uh, Yeah, it looks quite good. But there's um, just there's a picture of of one of the the Eighth Doctor's companions on the cover. Unit Nemesis 3, um, which uh, has obviously a continuing star and somebody I had my picture taken with, and very charming she is too, uh, um, Miss Redgrave. um, uh, So... Did I not show you that picture? Well, I'll show you at some point. Yeah. I found all my pictures from the early cons, the Doctor Who conventions. I'm so thrilled to find those because I need to get them scanned in and put in my file. Um, a allies and enemies. Um, don't know what that's all about, is it? Uh, oh, it's oh, at the Blake 7 Matt story. Master? What? They, they must still be uh, sponsoring because there's a blurb at the top of the page for the 20 megabyte yeah, document. No, 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 but they don't update stuff like that. I, I need to send some emails out. Hopefully things will continue as they were. Uh, anyway, Eighth Doctor Time. These are the stuff coming soon, by the way. Eighth Doctor Time and War 5 Cass. I suppose this is about one of his companions. And a Diary of Riven Song 11. Um, that's appropriate considering we've been doing some River Song stuff recently. Uh, Torchwood Story, Double One. Uh, of course, now I've decided that we've met the lovely Gareth David Lloyd, a very nice man, that it's now acceptable as long as he's in them if John Barrowman isn't. It's still Torchwood if he's in them. OK, um, Double Two, 
bit true. Let's have a look at the cover of that one. Oh, it's a spooky cover. Can't make out what it's supposed to be. Empire Man. Got lots of Torchwood coming out. Uh, Queen Victoria on the cover, but not played by um, Pauline Collins. And, <laughs> and War Doctor Begins for He Who Fights the Monsters. Lots of big Finnish stuff available. And, of course, War Master 8, Escape from Reality, we're featuring Derek Jacobi, or as the American Knights, Americans like to call him, Derek Jacoby. Yes, very true. It's a potato, potato, tomato, tomato. I've decided, oh. Alex, Alex Scott, who's a footballer, by the way, it's a very, very beautiful woman who's also a footballer i'm currently reading listening to her autobiography and she has been criticized for because the way she, where she comes from in london uh, instead of saying at the end of words that end in ing she's been criticized for not being on the bbc and so i'm not pronouncing ing so she will say in because that's the way she speaks from london and um she said that she's been trolled uh, on on the internet for the way she speaks, so I've decided to ease off of my my sort of uh, what's the word for it? Um, Criticisation. That's not a word, is it? Criticisation. No, crit- critiquing. That's a good word. Critiquing of people's pronunciation of words, um, because I now realise, thanks to Alex Scott, but it's just a locale situation. People pronounce because of mm-hmm. the way they come from or the way the people they are around speak. Fair enough. Right. Sorry, yeah. I got it wrong, and I'm prepared to say so. But I do say things correctly most of the time. Anyway, that's doc, that's who one dot co dot uk. Lavazi. Is that who one co dot uk? It's a bit of a shame that I said that because now I can't have any comedy in relation to American mispronunciation of words. But never mind. Dot co dot uk. Yes, you can. No, I can't. Adam, Adam with the tr- different area. Um, what uh, ways of saying words? No, are uh, indeed Mary. How would you describe your way what? of speaking? I mean, you know, there, there's, you know, the Common. Middle, you can tell the North, you can tell an East Ender, you can, you know, all that. How would, what, what, what is your Southern? <laughs> just Southern. Okay. Yeah. I, I um, just speak like me. I, I, mean, I know I, I do sometimes have a, a bit of a colloquial war sort of sound, depending who I'm speaking to. Depends who you're speaking to sometimes, because if you're talking to them, they, you hear the words echoed back to you, you tend to speak. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, in an Isle of Wight way, because Isle of Wight is is uh, a rural, mainly a rural. Oh, I need not my flown far, far. It's mainly a rural place. So the the people that live in the farming areas, maybe on the west Isle of Wight, will sound very west country. So they sound, um, you know, talk, talk a bit like, like that. And I can't actually do accents, which is a shame because I, I found out I'm 20% Scottish, so I'd love to be able to do a Scottish accent. Um, oh yeah. The dog snoring him. <laughs> Anyway, lavazi.co.uk do lots of documents. I, I just merch. Sent, uh, sent you guys three more pictures of the interior. Uh, yeah, it's like the um, the one the TARDIS console room that we're watching in the at the moment as we're going through the journey has been kind of just become completely whitewashed. White. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. So, excuse me. Um, Maybe it's a bit because the doctor's in flux. It's sort of in a sort of neutral until the doctor's the proper doctor, i.e., fifteen, yeah, settles in, and then it will become yeah, its uh, proper color. I see. I see on that console uh, in the middle. There's a lot of the same controls, but they're all gleaming and stuff. But they're they're also the same. Okay, well, I'd be so, interested yeah, to see why, won't it? Interesting. By the way, at Lavazi, you can join their blog uh, and submit and read fan fiction of, of Doctor Who. You can also get all sorts of fab merchandise if you want to cosplay, like the, the you know the Seventh Doctor's umbrella, the scarf, as we always mention, don't we? Paisley scarves for the Seventh Doctor and the Fifth Doctor's cricket jumper, or a version of them, and of course that iconic Seventh Doctor tank top jumper with all the question marks all over it which i have to say jodie whittaker looks so fab in it when she's got that amalgamation costume yes. when she was the masters regeneration doctor thingy yes Kirby. i said you're snoring you know it's the dog shut up <laughs> <sighs> right then um is it? yeah she is snoring quite a lot but at least she's asleep and not um making a mess of blood everywhere because she's got a horrible thing on her face which is it's, it's sort of she wishes she scratches it, it basically gushes blood everywhere. So at the moment, it's, she's asleep, so she's not causing any problems. She's old. She's probably dying. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but she's still eating. She's thin as a rake, but she's still eating and still 
a coherent, uh, but she's you know, she's 13 years old. She's not going to be with us much longer. Uh, and she's got this thing, this gross thing on the side of her face. Right then, so what we're going to do with you guys, um, because um, I, as I said, Ben's not here, is he? So, um, and I know I, I, I'm very kind. I like to make Ben feel as if he, he came up with the idea for the uh, the birthday game. Um, so. Oh no. Yes, he won't be listening to this episode, so I can say it was all uh, Paul Hawksby and Andy Jacobs' idea from Talk Sport. Uh, yes, those people who were very unkind to Ben and took the mickey out of his name. Um, and uh, I'm borrowing the idea and turning it into a Doctor Who version. We have three people uh, uh, who are associated with Doctor Who who um, had their birthdays or have their birthdays in February. And all you guys got to do is work out without cheating Kirby work out what not... their um, age is at the moment because these people are alive what their age is at the moment and of course the closest over the three rounds that gets to it um, will win and I know Mary's particularly good at this one aren't you Mary yes, <laughs> I am not I have, I have I'm afraid you are if I say you are who's in charge I'm quiet that says it all, doesn't it? Right then, so you get the first go, Mary. Uh, ladies first. I, I am traditional. I don't think it's a bad thing to say. Uh, I don't think uh, it's funny that people that um, try and say, "Oh, well, this is you should be more um, up to date and uh, uh, none, none of this ladies first or you know hold a door open for a lady or whatever." I think that's a load of nonsense. I think you should hold a door open if you've gone through first for anybody, to be fair. But as far as um, ladies first goes, I think that's a nice. Some traditions are nice to be uh, uh, held because ladies have to do all sorts of things that men can't like have babies and things uh, did I mention um, oh yeah Alicia's having a baby right then so um, the first name Mary is Nabil Shaban how old is Nabil Shaban he played um, he played uh, Sil by the way in, in Doctor oh, oh, oh. Oh, um, let me think here Nabil Shaban how old is he Thank you, brother. Kirby, oh. how old is Nabil Shaban? I, I'm going to guess he's somewhere in his 70s, <laughs> say, say 72. Okay. The next... he's, he's not younger than me. Whatever. The next name is Christopher Eccleston. I forgot to mention, of course, so Nabil Shaban is built, uh, born on the 12th of February. Christopher Eccleston is born on the 16th of February. But how old is Christopher Eccleston. Is it me first? Mary, oh, this is Kirby first, sorry. How okay. old is Christopher Eccleston? Uh, make it 45. And Mary, how old is Christopher Eccleston? I'll say 55. Okay. And the last round is Michael Sheen. Now, Michael Sheen played the, the voice of House in um, uh, the story we watched quite recently, in fact, which was uh, The Doctor's Wife. So, Mary, how old is Michael Sheen? Mm, 48. And Kirby, how old is Michael 65. Sheen? 65. 65. Okay, so uh, at this point, I now need, need to tote up the scores. <laughs> so uh, I just talk about your sales a bit uh, while I... Uh, natter, 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 grummish, grummish. Oh, come on, you, so better, you can do better than that. I, did, what did I do with the um, spreadsheet so I can update the winner? Because How does that work on a podcast, Kirby? I had closed it because I thought we were done. Okay. So, <laughs> since we're talking about um, Christopher Eccleston, mm. um, I'll jump in with one of the things that I've been doing uh, is that I've been listening to another box set with mm. him as the Ninth Doctor called Into the Stars, and it's really good. I'm telling you, he is such a joy to listen to. He, he embodies that Ninth Doctor so well yeah. um, that I just really enjoy listening to his stories. Oh, I thought you were going to carry on. I thought it was an excellent uh, well, bit of filling. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about it other than uh, <laughs> anyone else who's listened to it that wants to. Usually, uh, Alan T. Butcher is a big Finnish listener, so... Yeah. 
I'm curious if he's heard any of the uh, Christopher Eccleston stories and what he thinks. Maybe when we do the update on the, what people have been saying on on the live feed, we might be to find out. So hopefully, all that while I'm still working this out, I, it, I find it interesting that uh, Eccleston is now sort of embracing the Doctor again, and uh, Capaldi is has pushed it away. Uh, yeah, you got to wonder why Capaldi's pushing it all away because you know he was he's such a Doctor Who fan, such a famous. He was president of, of the Doctor Who fan club. Yeah, yeah. Who was? So you'd, Who? you'd think he'd be jumping oh, right Ca- on. Well, Capaldi was. Maybe the BBC has some kind of a time um, limit in which they don't want their doctors to be making these for. You know, for yeah, a, possibly he's, so. said that he's just pushed pushed it away. He's actually said it. Mm. Oh, I don't remember the reasons. It, it wasn't as bad as Eccleston saying that he was treated terribly. Okay. And, well, and I've and met I'm, I'm, I've I'm met and shook hands with Christopher I'm Eccleston. He's a delightful man. Eventually. Well, yeah. What did he say? What did he say that he doesn't want to I, do? It? I don't know. I'd have to look it up. That was a couple months ago. I thought. Mm. Oh, great, okay. All right. Great filling, guys. Great filling, because I know how the Results of how oh. old are they, or as, as Ben would call it, how aged are they? I better stick to Ben's title for copyright reasons. Okay, what, so the first what, mate. What, what, what is the title of this? So that how I can put aged it... are they? This is Ben. Okay, we'll call the it the same thing. Well, how you have to. How aged, aged are, are they? they with... Without jokes, yes. Without jokes. Yeah, without jokes. Minus jokes. Um, can I continue? Yes. I'm going to anyway. Right, so the first name up was Nabil yes. Sh- What? I said yes, go ahead. Yeah. Nabil Shaban, who played Sil uh, in Doctor Who and other things. Uh, Nabil Shaban was born on the 12th of February 1953, uh, which makes him 69, of course. Mary said he was 58. Kirby said he was 72. And the next name was Christopher Eccleston who was born on the 16th of February 1964, which makes him 58. Mary said he was 55. Kirby said he was 45. And the last name is Michael Sheen, who was born on the 5th of February 1969. Mary said he was 48. Kirby said he was 65. So, Kirby scored 28 points. And Mary scored 19 points, which makes Mary the winner. Right, what we watched this oh, week. Oh, and, and Mary, 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 Mary. What, what? Mary, you won the first uh, How Aged Are They back uh, almost a year ago. Like I bet, I bet you're ago. thrilled with that bit of news, aren't you, Mary? I think one thing you're really looking forward to find that out. And I'd like to get an extra point for myself for being right. That Mary is going <laughs> I've got it in this database. Okay. How great. That really works well on an audio presentation. Right then, let's see if anything's coming through on the live feed. We have uh, Terry Miles. We thought it was that he was afraid he was going to be sent. Oh, I've done that bit. Nobody said anything new. I didn't find that. Uh, oh, yeah, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah, what we watched this week. We've got to watch loads of stuff. Things. Obviously, I haven't been to the cinema. I really wanted to go to the cinema. Um, Isabella went to watch um, Puss in Boots, the, the, the the, the, the latest version. Um, she's not here to, to say what she thought about it, but she told me that they really liked it. But there are a couple of films I want to see. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to go this weekend. But what I did watch was a film on Netflix called The Bank of Dave, uh, based on a true story. It's uh, very sort of is nice, <laughs> I suppose you call it. It's a nice film and uh, well acted. Um, a bit of a evil character played by uh, Hugh Bonneville, but um, it's a true story, so I suppose they can't go too dark in it. Uh, and, a, and a nice cameo by Le- Def Lefford. Um, but uh, what else have we watch? I watch. I've been watching a few. Back into watching a few crime things after catching up with all the archaeological and history programs that I had been watching. Uh, there's something on Disney Plus which is 
called a fatal flaw it's only four episodes of that um where people tried to or murdered somebody but uh, almost got away with it apart from one tiny little detail they missed and therefore that being the fatal flaw that's quite a good series um on discovery plus that, that sounds kind of like a colombo no this is actually a real real thing oh, rather real. than okay. it's not a drama it's a documentary series um there's also on no, was I watch on Netflix? I can't remember now. There's another series. I forgot what it was. You, you made me forget. I'm going to blame you. You made me forget what it was. That's yeah, right. What? I made you forget. Yeah. Um. Oh, I watched all the. Uh, I'll probably now when Mary talks about her stuff, I'll probably remember what I'll, I'll watch now. Um. That's probably the, the um the only. F- oh yeah, Nolly uh, on um, ITVX. Um, it was uh, Helena Bonham Carter playing Noel Gordon, who was the star of a, uh, a daytime soap opera in the 60s and 70s called Crossroads. Um, Wings, that's Paul McCartney Wings, actually did an alternative theme tune for Crossroads in the 70s, which was quite good. And, and Noel Gordon was basically the star of the show. And then she got fired. And this is the story of of what happened around Noel Gordon's firing. There's some great performances in it. One, obviously, Helen Helen Bonham Carter, but also Mark Gate is playing a um, Larry Grayson, who was a much loved camp comedian of the 70s, basically, and um, and a, an actor called Tony Adams. So I think he might have been in Doctor at some point, who who was much younger than Noel Gordon, but was a very very good friend of hers, and it was very charming and, and some of the the scenes were beautifully recreated like the qe2 doctor at southampton circa 1980 you know and um yeah the the, the atv building in, in in birmingham things that don't exist anymore they've done a great job in in creating them making it look like they're actually real i know they do that in a lot of dramas but it did look particularly good in this and yeah it was quite a charming thing watched that on saturday afternoon all three episodes in a in a sort of binge and, uh, yeah, there's something I was just about to watch on Netflix, but we won't talk about that now because I, th- I really can't remember what it was. So we move over to Kirby. I suppose you haven't watched anything this week. I thought you know Yes, I, I watched one thing. This little thing, uh, this little documentary called Doctor Who Am I? Oh, you got round to watching that. Good. Yes. Uh, well, it was difficult to find. But, uh, I've just found that's actually on ITVX now after I bought it. It's actually on ITVX. Typical, isn't it? I, I um, managed to hop in my TARDIS and go through space and time and got, oh, uh, it was really interesting. And yes, I recognized an awful lot of people in that. Yeah, indeed. But yeah, it, it, it was nice to, to see a convention again because it's been so long since I've been to a convention. Is it the San Diego convention? Gallifrey? Gallifrey's definitely. Yeah, it, that, that's L.A., but yes. Oh, L.A., um, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, the San Diego yeah, one is The, massive, the interesting it? thing about that hotel that I always remember is they hold, hold it in a hotel right next to the runways of LAX, and that's the hotel that I stayed at, that my wife and I stayed at, on our way to China to adopt our youngest. Oh, um, wow. And on our way back, we also stayed at that same hotel, but there was no... Is it nice? <laughs> yes, there was cool. no convention. No, but yeah, it's it's good. I mean, I talk about conventions. There's um, London uh, Spring Comic Con coming up soon, and um, it's just a bad timing, running city monetarily uh, in the year. I really want to go to it because Joseph Quinn is um, going to be there again. We missed out on him because when he was there last summer, we could only do the Friday, and he was there on the Saturday. But this year, he's there on the Saturday, essentially. We could go, but Isabella is working Saturdays. So I could potentially get the day off, but she said no, and she really wants to meet him. So, um, yeah, we're a bit stuffed on that one. That's not going to happen. And the other good thing about that convention is that uh, the chap who plays the master, the current master, is a guest at it, and that would have been nice to get an opportunity to to meet him. But, uh, yeah. Over to Mary. What have you been watching this week? Um, well, as always, a lot of basketball. Um, and... What else have I been watching? I've been watching um, Murder Mysteries on uh, a Netflix. I've been Ooh. watching a Scandinavian. You've reminded uh, me of something. Can I inter- interject? Um, go ahead. You know, Ben was saying last week about uh, Vilile Shabalala appearing in Death in Paradise. 
and indeed she was. It was lovely to see her, and it, I, um, it, it spurred, spurred me on to actually send her a message saying, I'm so glad, you know, to, to see you on the telly, etc., etc., and she very kindly responded. And you may continue, Mary, just wanted to say. In the Death in Paradise, has ne- I've never caught on to it. Um, I, I know that it's done, you know, like kind of lighthearted, and all, maybe that's it. You know, I like really serious murder yeah, mysteries. It, it, it's, uh, so, mid, it's Midsummer and it, Murders yeah, with Sunshine. Like, like Christy, they yeah. all sit around a table and tell what happened, and it's like, no, nah, I don't like that kind. So, <laughs> so I've never really become a fan of, of uh, Death in Paradise. Um, but, yeah, I've been watching a, a Scandinavian one called Dead... Deadwood. Um, All right. It's got three seasons, and I'm finishing up the third season. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've seen. Oh, um, I, I want to see everything all the time, everywhere. Oh, I love that yeah, film. I want to see that too. But how love can, it. Where is it? Well, we got a trial, a free, a 30 day free trial to Showtime. <laughs> oh. oh, it's on Prime Showtime here. Showtime is uh, showing it, so that's when I'm gonna. So that's where I'm yeah. gonna watch it. We, I um, think, pretty sure it's on Prime here. Uh, and you can buy it on you know, on various other it's formats. On here, if you mm. want to buy it or rent mm. it, but mm. we don't want to do that. We want we want the free thirty day trial, so we can watch it for free. Um, and then there's another movie, Tar, that stars Kate Blanchett, and I see that uh, that's on. What is it on? It's on Peacock. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to watch that, but yeah. uh, I'm outside of that, and and, and the uh, Christopher Eccleston box set. I know I Deb's been watching. Um, Happy Valley, and everybody raves about how wonderful Happy Valley is with Sarah Lancashire. Oh, God. Happy Valley is amazing. Uh, and the last episode is on tonight. The uh, very last ever episode is on tonight. On oh, One. Sarah Lancaster is she's she's wonderful. A good actress, isn't she? She's very good at playing all sorts of different characters. Oh amazing. my gosh, yes, yeah. yeah that good. that is a series that you know, even though it's it's kind of horrific. <laughs> mm. I hated to see it end. <laughs> yeah, it's got some great actors in it. Um, you know, people playing characters they don't normally play. They're not re- remembered or recognised for. You know, I mean, I, I can't. I, I, I'm too late into the thing. I, I, where it's got a sort of depressing sort of undertone, I don't, I don't really want to watch stuff that's got depressing undertones. Like things that have got a little bit of a depressing undertone, but mainly quite light-hearted. Uh, and that's why I haven't been watching an awful lot of dramas. I do need to catch up with Picard because they do in the third series, aren't they? In the last one, and I've seen some little glimpses of the third series, and it's got obviously the the next some of the next gen cast in it. But anyway, I interrupted you. I do apologise, Mary. Carry on. Well, I, I do want to say though that anybody that I've talked to that has seen everything all the time, everywhere, have been kind of lukewarm. You know, I love it. Me and me and Isabella. Abs- it is it, it is something you have to concentrate on. Uh, yeah, and open your yeah. mind to. But nobody seems overly impressed with it, but I want to see it anyway. But, um, Michelle, I've um, heard that it's fantastic. It is. I, it's a lovely. Of course, thing. I haven't seen it, so. It's just something completely different to anything. It's just wonderful. The only thing it, it reminded me of slightly, and there's nothing about the you know um, Groundhog Day about it, but Live, uh, Die, Repeat, that Tom Cruise film, which I really, really like. Um, it's sort of. Uh, there's a little hint of that with me for it, but um, I do like Live, Die, Repeat. Have you ever seen Live, Die, Repeat? No? Yes? No. no. It's a hard-hitting version of Groundhog Day. It was brilliant. Um, anyway, what were we talking about? I've lost the plot now. Oh, all <laughs> of, every, everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'll just say, though, because um, uh, I'm a big fan of Michelle Yao, who, pl- who plays... Evelyn Kwan Wang in um, Everything Everything or ev- Everything Everywhere All at Once. She also plays um, a captain in Star Trek Discovery who gets killed in the first episode. Spoilers! Um, but she is... Her screen presence is just out of this world. She's an amazing actress. And she started out as being a, a, a model and stuff. But wow. Um, she's 60 and what a talent she is uh, and yeah I, I could just watch anything she's in she's so fab she's got an amazing voice as well a very deep sort of gravelly sort of voice and she's wonderful um, so yeah they get, go and see it just to watch Michelle Yao just steal the yeah. screen basically she's wonderful wonderful actress well it's on Sorry. showtime for anybody who wants to do a 30 day free trial <laughs> well yeah everything everywhere all at once but yeah she, I mean what a, how lucky were uh, the the creators and producers of Star Trek Discovery to have her for, th- for nearly three series. Wow. Yeah, it's another reason to watch that series, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. 
It's uh, she's just amazing. Sorry, I, I interrupted I, I you. Like I just saw a good gush about me. One Michelle, of the yeah. people who stars in it is Kehe Ki Hui Guan, who uh, was short round in the second Indiana Jones movie. He was, yes. <laughs> yes. And he was also in The Goonies. Yeah, but Jamie Lee Curtis is in it, and she doesn't do a lot of films, and she plays a completely different character. Oh, and I than, see James yeah. Hong is in it. He's in everything. Is it? Well, watching, yeah, he was, was he's in all the Marvel the, stuff, isn't he? Yeah, I, I was watching uh, with Fred the other day. She was watching the TV series of, uh, the latest TV series of Kung Fu Panda, yeah. and James Hong was there again. Yeah. But no, it's a fab film. I must watch it again, because it's... It is just wonderful. <laughs> Me and Isabella they, absolutely they love it. it Isabella wants it to win all the Oscars because she loves it so much. It's such good. But we're like, it's nice to get to see it in the cinema, to be fair. We did get to see it. I wonder, if, I wonder if Redbox has it because, you know, I can no longer it's get worth, stuff It's worth uh, paying a rental fee on, on one of the streaming services just to watch it the once rather than buy it. You know, um, I think Isabella... Well, I'm sure it'll eventually it. show up it. on one of the streaming services that I actually have. Yeah. I'm not going to go out and sign up for showtime for one movie okay yeah and in my opinion it's about the only thing worth watching on showtime i don't see much of anything else that i would want to continue on it with hmm. oh, i remember the old days when i had every single premium thing on uh, cable yes i did too <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing. It's stuff you can watch now, and I've got a cupboard full of DVDs, which you could, you, I don't have to use, even though we've got a Blu-ray player. We don't have to use because you can find them somewhere, you know, on the internet to, to yeah. watch it if you yeah. really, really want to watch it. And, um, yeah, it's the only frustrating thing. I, mean, I, I still like to have a hard copy of sometimes, you know, that you, but you don't need the hard copies because eventually the price has come down so far you can what, you get given out as free gifts. Uh, for, from services like Sky and stuff. Um, but, but it's nice to with, have a hard copy of all the Harry Potter films, which you can watch anytime, anywhere, without yeah, even owning them. The problem with, with, having, uh, with relying on streaming is that all of a sudden you'll go out there, oh, I want to watch this, and you can't find it on streaming anymore. Right, right. Or, yeah. or it switches to another streaming you, service. If you buy yeah. it, you, you, if you buy it, you're okay. Apple, all the film, everything I've ever bought on Apple TV uh, or iTunes is still there. It's still there as a hard copy. Or if I haven't got the hard copy, I can download it, which is great because bear in mind, I've probably not had iTunes for 15 years. Um, so I can go into my library and everything's there if I wanted to watch it. I can't say the same that, you know, say if you, you can't buy items on Netflix, obviously, because some, they have contracts, don't they? So sometimes series that they don't make will drop off and go elsewhere, like all the Paramount stuff. I think they've Netflix still has um, the original Star Trek series, which is also available on Paramount+. Plus. But I, it used no, to have... I, they got rid of it on Netflix because... I don't Paramount think, that, I think it's still it. there on ours. I think it's still there on ours. Um, well, yours, not pardon? ours. Yeah, I'm saying, but so they have contracts, and they with with fer, uh, various franchises. It's like the Picard series; it's been on Prime. I'd be very surprised if that doesn't disappear on Prime and just end up on uh, on Paramount Plus. So yeah, that's also only on Paramount Plus here. Hmm. So that I'm saying that you know, if you, if you um have a, a a service where you buy the item, it will then stay in your library. Uh, so you can watch it and I, I i'm not that keen on buying stuff through prime because of this thing of you know things falling off it or whatever but i will buy stuff through sky because uh i've never had anything that we bought through sky not be available to, to keep but the trouble with sky is if i leave sky at any point that i never get it even though i've bought it but apple mm -hmm. itunes you know it's it's it, you you log on is free uh, anything you bought is free and anything they decide uh, to give out like podcasts or whatever are free anyway, so it's a service that has free elements to it, the free free content. I think they they like to call it anyway. Yeah, Sorry, there, there is. I just brought up Netflix. There is no Star Trek at all on our Netflix. Um, oh, do you want me to bring up my Netflix and see? If no, oh. I believe you. No, I, I don't believe myself now. Now I've said that, I don't want to mislead our listeners. So I'm going to have a look. We, we've established that UK uh, Netflix has different stuff. Yes, we have, but I'd want to be correct uh, when... Um, uh, you do! It's different. Uh, sorry, I hope it's not playing that audio there. What's it called again? Star Trek. Star Trek. 
Right, see what we've got here. We've got, on our Netflix, we've got Star Trek the original series, Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, Enterprise, animated series, um, For the Love of Spock. It's a great film. Have you seen that, seen that one? No, it's, I um, haven't. That made is by Netflix. Leonard Nimoy's son about Star Trek and Leonard himself. Yeah, yeah um, that is on, on our uh, Netflix, which is interesting. It's the only thing that comes up. If it's you a great, look, lovely film. Start, Watch right. it. It's really good. If you obviously if you have any affection for Leonard Nimoy, or of course. As, as he should call himself, Nimoy. I do apologise for mispronunciation of Leonard Nimoy. Say. Yeah, so um, there's stuff I've got in my list to watch. I haven't watched yet. Is uh, obviously Bank of Day, like I said. The Volcano, which is a, a documentary series about a, a volcano. Funny that, isn't it? Um, crime Scene, The Texas Killing Fields. I find, find that the, perhaps I won't watch that one just yet because it sounds really hard-hitting. And also I had been, I'd started watching uh, the Pamela Anderson uh, called A Love Story, which is basically, you know, they had that series about Pam and uh, Tommy Lee that was on uh, Disney+. Plus. Um Pamela has agreed to do a, a, a basically a documentary about her life, which is, covers all her life and what she's doing now and stuff like that. And I've watched about, well, Isabella came down gushing about it. I did, that's not the sort of thing you would normally watch. Uh, and she said, oh, it's really, really good. And she's really lovely. So um, I've been watching the Pamela Anderson, a love story documentary, which is really quite nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, Fantasy Con News. Uh, we have announced that, um, that Julian um, oh, Seeger, Julian Seeger is, is coming to the event. Now he has been in Doctor Who very briefly. I haven't, uh, if you, if you, anybody sees him in uh, what the episode I say he was in, he plays Red something or other. I can't I remember. Have no yeah. idea. Yeah, I did say I did post on the 20 megabyte page, but he's in Vikings of Valhalla, which is another Netflix series which I'm not going to watch. But he plays uh, Jarl something or other in in that. He's he's in Doc Martin as a regular as well, uh, and he's done a, a few bits and bobs here and there. And he seems like a very nice man, and he wants to come to our event. So delighted to um, invite him along. Uh, I haven't announced it yet, but. Uh, uh, Craig Fairbrass, who couldn't come last year because he was filming, has agreed to come again this year, and. Um, yeah, so things are taking shape. Uh, tickets are available now at FantasyCon.net if you're in the UK, or FantasyCon.net if you want to travel from abroad, like um, Billy Kurt Bright did in 2019, to come to our little uh, our little gig in Newport. So there we go. That's about it, really. Now, you know, as... there, there's a couple of Americans that you could invite as guests at some point. Yeah, well, you have to pay for it yourself, but yes, that's true. You're always invited, Kirby, if you want to come along and pay it for it. Mary was supposed to come and visit me a couple of years ago, but come oh, up yeah. with this feeble then, excuse that there was some pandemic uh, going on at the time. So, yeah, yeah what's just that? time. <laughs> so, so waiting for it all to be reorganised then, are we, Mary? Uh, well, yes, but now there's a one-year-old grandson, oh. so... <laughs> So I don't think the visit's going to happen anytime soon. Right, next time, I'll make sure I'm available next week. <clears throat> uh, it's The Girl Who Waited uh, will, will be our next um, uh, review story. And yes, I should be available next week on the 12th of February. And I won't uh, be. You won't be. Hang on, where's me? Uh, uh, where's uh, 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 uh. Oh. Oh, sorry, that's the Kirby <laughs> thing. Um, um, I can't find it, Kirby. Hang on, see it somewhere. Here. Hallelujah. Oh, no, there it is. Oh, sorry, that's just the door opening. And no, it isn't me farting. Uh-huh. That's the door opening. This is Kirby. Um, <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting. This might be just me and you next week then, Mary. That'll make a good show, will it? Oh, what about uh, Ben? And maybe be able to get Debbie. Figure out what happened yes, with her. Debbie Melrose. Good body. Good. That's like a say for yourself. I was really looking forward to having her back on the show this week. Yeah. She mm. hasn't been on for a while. No. Uh, typical, isn't it? She needs to sort herself out. So, until next time, thank you for watching, listening, taking part, providing feedback via 20mb.feedback and gmail.com. Can please continue to do so. Let's have some new people as well. Goodbye. Goodbye, fancy pants.
Services production and is a proud member of the Doctor Who podcast alliance. Doctor Who is a trademark of the BBC. No copyright infringement intended. <laughs> I did it! <laughs>